Well, good morning. I'm super blessed because I get to preach. <laughs> I'm just, um, as we've gotten to know you guys over the last months, it's just you've been a blessing to us, and we love being with you whenever we can. So, um, yeah, you know, when I was asked to, to share this morning, I said, Lord, what, a, what do you want me to share on? Usually I just share, you know, God's given me a, a message for my uh, congregation that we lead in, in um, our Messianic congregation that we leave in, lead in Golden. I said, well, sometimes it's, I'll just share that same message. But the Lord said, no, I want you to share something this morning. Um, it's kind of it goes along with the season. So um, first of all, Happy New Year. You're all like going, what? Happy New Year. You know what? This is the first month of the new year, according to the biblical calendar. But even our Jewish people, we don't celebrate the new year at the Passover. I'm going to talk about the Passover this morning, which is basically the new year. Um, Jews really celebrated God, you know, at uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is fall. It's the civil new year. But actually, God says, I want this to be the beginning, a new start. And so I really want to just talk this morning about Passover and the cross. And you think, well, I've heard these messages before, been to the Seders. You know, it's, we all know that. But, you know, and I might give you things and share things with you that you might have heard. But I just, I just God's heart for delivering the Israelites out of Egypt is the same heart he has for us, to bring them to himself. That was what it was about. And some people think of these things as, well, these are the Jewish feasts. They're not the Jewish feasts. You know, Leviticus 23, it says, these are the Lord's appointed times, or Moadim. Moadim, which is a Hebrew word. I try to teach you guys a Hebrew word every, every time I come here. Is that Okay. Okay, Moadim. Everybody say Moadim. And it means appointed times or, or rehearsals. And you can read about all the appointed times in Leviticus 23. I have, um, you know, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. Um, the Lord spoke again to Moses saying, saying, it was just that pregnant pause right there when he was, oh, yeah, speak to, the, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the Lord's appointed times which you shall proclaim as his convocation. My appointed times. This is all about God wants to bring his kids. This is what the appointed times, that's what the Passover is. That's what all of the feasts of the Lord is, is he wants to bring his people to himself. That's what it's about today. So, and another word for definition of appointed times, it's, it's a rehearsal. Did you know that? It actually, mo'adim actually really means a rehearsal. It's an appointed time, but it's a rehearsal. God is preparing his people for an eternity with him. You know, this morning I was, the worship was awesome, first of all. Joy, team, you guys, it was awesome. The presence of the Lord, and see, that's what it's all about. I don't know, the older I get, maybe a few of you can, Bob, I know you can do this, Bob. You, 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 the older we get, the more we just want to just spend time. Not to saying that we're old, but we just want to spend more time with him, being in his presence. That's what it's all about, just to praise him. Everything else going around, you know, God says, I want my people to just be, come, come to me, because out there, you, it's going to be, it's a mess. It's a mess out there, but you come to me, and, and we, we're restored, and we get our proper perspective on everything. So it's a season of rehearsal in the Passover, and that's what this is right now, this time we're in. Set apart. And, and it's just, he's, there's a desperation in the body today to awake. I don't know, that's a word that I've been hearing a lot in the last, especially the last year. All the shakings that have been going on, it's to awaken the church. Awaken the church, the body of Christ. And to repent and to prepare. Awake. What are we awakening from? 
mediocrity. Anybody ever walked, feel like, you know, just things are just kind of mediocre. And I'm tired of mediocrity. And God says, I'm tired of it too. And religion could be mediocrity too. That's why his presence is so important. He says, awake from that place of mediocrity or casualness. Oh, and this, is, this really hit me as I was preparing this week. Casualness in our relationship with the Lord and in our worship with him. It's not about performance. It's not about presentation. It's about a heart that's just, just so on fire for the Lord. That's what it is. No more casualness in our pursuit of intimacy and relationship. You see, when we're in that place of intimacy and relationship with him, the ministry stuff will take care of itself. We'll be hearing and he'll go, I want you to go over here and I just want you to just be with that person and to say these things. That comes out of that place of intimacy and that's what he wants. He wants us also to... This is a season, and all of the feasts, the appointed times, the Moedim, are about a time of repentance. And usually when you talk about repentance in the church, it's a big downer. Oh, man. Heavy. Oh, no, man. I'm such a worm. Such a worm. <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning. This is just a little aside, you know, and you're growing up, and Remember when you graduated high school or maybe college and, and, and everybody says, man, this is the greatest. You just performed the greatest thing in your life. You're great people. You're going to change the world. And for me, and it's like I'm hearing this, the valedictorian speech. You're going to change the world. You guys are going to be world changers. A month later, I was in boot camp in the Navy and I was called a worm. And you're useless and terrible and, and all kinds of things that because it's Sunday, I can't mention anything because we're in church. But you see what I mean? You know, we get this message and then we get this message. You know, we don't know what to believe. God says this is a time, a serious time of repentance, of it's not about me. It's just about coming into you. And, and, you know, that's what Yeshua, that's what he came to do. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it says, From then on, Yeshua began to proclaim Turn away from your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is near. That's what repentance is. Turning away from the sins, the things that pull us apart and pull into him. He's saying, like, come out, come up, and then go out. That's what he's saying. Repent of, sometimes we feel like we have, God owes us happiness. You know, God owes us this, this, I always need to be on top of things. And, and you know, I, I don't know, I, when I read the scriptures and the, and the heroes of faith, it's like, man, they were like, <laughs> it wasn't about happiness. There's a joy, you know. But man, I th- there, was a, there was some times that weren't very happy. But God is calling us to himself through repentance and just waking up and and he wants us to prepare. And this is, this is key. And this is another thing about the, 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 the feasts of the Lord. These appointed times are a time of preparation. Because he says, I want you to come away from what you regularly do and come unto me. Whether it be the Passover. Oh, I forgot to, um, to do this. And I want to do this now. Because you see, when God first called 12 tribes to one to become one nation. See, they were 12 tribes. They didn't really like each other because they were slaves and they had a bad mentality about things. And they were always bickering with each other. And if you've ever been to Israel, they kind of still do. but, But God called them out of a place of slavery, out of a place of separateness in 12 tribes to be one nation. And he called them to a place called Sinai. You know? And... Matter of fact, and I shared this in our congregation yesterday, is that when he was... He said, Moses, get the people ready. Get the people ready because I'm coming. Three days, preparation. And so then they heard this sound, but the sound they heard is a lot more than this sound. But this is kind of what they heard. Yeah. 
And when they heard that, guess what? They were terrified. They were terrified. And they said, Moses, you go talk to him. You go talk. We're afraid of him. And Moses, so they pulled away and Moses went into that place and talked to the Lord. And yet God wanted the people of Israel to come and be with him, but they were afraid. And God is saying to us today, come to me. Don't be afraid. Yeah, there's shaking going on. The mount, <laughs> imagine this, this mountain, Sinai, it was full of smoke and shaking and thundering, and then a, vo- a, a shofar from heaven. That's why I'm saying it was a lot more than what this was, sounded. And so in the natural, they were afraid. But God is saying, come to me. Come to me. And that's what he's saying at this time. Prepare. And guys, we've seen all the things that are going on, all the shaking that's going on, disasters. I also want to remind us, too, even in the last two weeks, this country, God is calling this country to awake and to prepare because things are happening. You might say they're a coincidence, but I don't think that ship running into that bridge was a coincidence. I'm sorry. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. And, you know, talk to me. I'm not. I don't believe, you know, I hear things all the time, and I go, I don't buy that. But this, this was not an accident, guys. This was Francis Scott Key who penned the Star Spangled Banner, and the bridge comes crashing down, and that port of Baltimore serves Washington, D.C., too. Like, get get our attention, okay? I believe that, okay? And then, okay, a week later, in the United Nations, the United States abstains from a vote, basically, all the nation says Israel's to blame. Israel needs to do this. Israel needs to do that. And the United States says, oh, we're going to stay neutral in this. We're going to stay out of this. No, there's no neutrality, okay? And then what happens just the other day? And this is just, I, again, earthquakes in New York. There hasn't been an earthquake in New York in 200 years. A measurable earthquake for a long time. And this happens and people are freaking out. People in New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania, they were all freaking out. I I grew up in California. We had earthquakes every other day, you know, and sometimes they were worse than others, but it was like, that's just part of life. They're freaking out. God is saying, hello, governmental um, centers, financial centers, get ready, prepare. I believe these are signs that we're to listen to. The body... And and Yeshua said this in Matthew chapter 24. He says, And many people's loves will grow cold because of increased distance from Torah or from the Word of God. Their love will grow cold towards one another and towards Him. Aren't we kind of living in that day today? That's the bad news. This is the good news. God wants to teach us. And he does this through the feasts. He does this through the Passover. There's a plan of redemption that's ever since the fall in the garden, God's plan has always been to restore, to bring his people back to himself. That's from everything that takes place. It's all about restoration. He is into redemption. He has a plan. And that's what the Passover is all about. That's what the cross is all about. A plan of redemption for all of us. Hello, that's what it's about. He wants to teach us also his loving and compassionate heart, his father's heart. He wants us to come to him and desire to commune with him. And, and in that, that's where we bear fruit. I got to work really hard. You ever been into an apple field? I shared this before. You've been into an apple field, an apple orchard, and you ever hear the apples straining and groaning to produce apples? Why not, Bob? Because it's just who they, they, they just, the fruit just abides in them, you know, they just let the sap go through them. So, oh, the Passover, it's beautiful. And this is where the season, in two weeks, we're going to be celebrating our, um, Our uh, seders in homes, we do this every year, two weeks actually from tomorrow. So we're in the season. 
So that's why I said Happy New Year. So I want to read this story. And maybe you, you probably have heard this story, but I just want to read it. And you can close your eyes as I read this story. Or just, or just, but just listen to the story. It's, pretty, it, it's a cool story. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. That's why I said this is the new year. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of the month, of this month, which is Nisan, but it's also got another name called Aviv. Which, which means it's, an, it's, it's spring. And it's, isn't that interesting? That's why it's kind of been changed. It started with Nisan, but it's spring because this is the spring season. Each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for the whole household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor are to take one according to the number of the people, according to each person eating. And we sat at our tables yesterday after our congregation decided, okay, how much meat are we going to have? Okay, how many people are going to be coming? How much meat? It's the same thing. It's always the same. It's always about food, isn't it? And, and, all, and that's another thing about most of these feasts. Most of them, not all of them. They're all about, okay, let's come together. We're going to have a meal, guys. That's how God is, you know. And that's how, with our Jewish people, you know, as always, you know, they tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. Verse 5, I always have these asides and then I run out of time and so I don't want to run out of time too. So stop getting me to be distracted, okay? You guys are... Verse 5, your lamb is to be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You must watch over it until the 14th day of the same month. Very specific. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. They are to take the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the crossbeam of the houses where they will eat. They are to eat the meat that night roasted over a fire with matzah and bitter herbs. They are to eat it. This is the original Passover Seder. There was only three items, meat, matzah, bitter herbs. We've added a few since then, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Verse 9, do not eat any of it raw or boiled with water, but only roasted with fire. And I'll share with you in a minute. Why is it specifically talk about that? It's head with its legs and its innards. So let nothing of it remain until the morning. Whatever remains until the morning, you are to burn with fire. Also, you are to eat it this way, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. This is, this just came, this is how God wants us to be. With your feet, with your loins girded, ready for warfare, ready for battle. Your shoes on your feet, ready to go. And your staff in your, the authority, in your hand. You are to eat it in haste. It is Adonai's Passover. Verse 12, For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will execute judgments against all the peoples of all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. It, and there's so much there. There was ten plagues, the ten major gods of Egypt. That's what they represented. And God dealt with everyone and destroyed everyone. Everyone. There's only one God. Only one God. So I will go through the land of Egypt and on that night and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will execute judgments against all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's Passover or Pesach, Passover. He passed over when he saw the blood. He passes over us when he sees the blood on our hearts, the lentils of our hearts. But the angel of death passed over the thresholds of the Egyptians' home. 
It's important. There's a Passover, two Passovers. The Passover where God passed over when he saw the blood, and the Passover of the angel of death coming into the homes and taking away the firstborn. Terrible judgment upon the gods of Egypt. So there will be no plague among you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a memorial for you. You are to keep it as a feast to Adonai throughout your generations. You are to keep it as an eternal ordinance. That's why we do this every year, because God says, I want you to do this every year. So let's look at some of, let's just, some of the aspects of the lamb. So important. We know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Lamb of God, come to take away the sins of the world. This, this flat flock had to be taken from the flock, in other words, from about the among, just and also Yeshua from among his own people, taken from the flock, hidden in the house, taken it and hidden in the house for several days, taken and taken care of. Imagine kids with a little lamb in the house. They, they, they grow attached to pets, don't they? And so it's part of the, it becomes part of the household. It had to be a male in its prime of life. No spot, no spot, no blemish. It had to be absolutely perfect. It's a picture of Jesus. To be an individual experience, all of, it's what is, it, everybody experienced this. And this is everything about all of the, the appointed times. It's not just for the pastor to preach to the people and them to listen and receive information, but they all participated in this. Every one of them participated in this. There's a message. Kill and divide. Kill. What, what is this all about? That precious, blameless, innocent animal had to be killed, slaughtered. At a specific time, at twilight, the going down of the sun. It also shows us that there's a division between Egypt and Israel. I'm making a difference between you are my people. I'm calling you out of this place. And so there's a division. You no longer are going to be part of this as a slave. I'm calling you out. We need to look at this. This is a division between us and the world. We're in the world. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We have to experience all the things, the craziness, the corruption that's going on. But we're not of the world. We're different. There's a difference. There's a, he's separating us. Every feast, Passover, all of them, there's a built-in part of it when God says, come to me. There's a time of preparation. In other words, examine our lives. And this is something that we do at the Passover. Is we examine our lives Am I different? Am I different than that out there? Am I different than I was a month ago, a year ago? It's about examining ourselves. And we also see in the, in the Passover, it's, a, it's cutting covenant. God cuts covenant. He cut it with Abraham. And he's doing it here with the people of Israel. That cutting of the covenant with the, with the lamb that says, I'm inviting you. God is saying, I'm inviting you into my family. That's what it's all about. And Yeshua is our lamb. And it was specific instructions that it had to be, the lamb had to be roasted by fire. In other words, Yeshua, it's Jesus, had to take on the divine wrath of God through the fire. And nothing was to be left. If anything was left over, it was to be burnt up. So that's the Passover. Something I failed to mention at the beginning is that the Passover, actually, there's three feasts within three days. Most of you know this, but so the first day was the Passover. The cutting of the covenant. And then the second day, is it's, it begins what's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Matzah. And let me read what the scriptures say about that in, in Exodus chapter 12, same chapter. And I really encourage you to, to read this as we get close to the, to this, to the Passover. Verse 17 <clears throat> Are you 17? 
You shall also observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. <clears throat> and so you, you get the point. God says, I want you to do this. There's the Passover, and then there's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's a time of separation. And we try to do this ourselves, is to eliminate what's called chametz. It's yeast. It's, it's, it's that things that rise, that cause the bread to rise. I love bread. And that's, this is... This is my sacrifice during the Passovers. I love bread. And yet, we're called for seven days to not eat unleavened bread. Or not just bread, but anything that had leaven, which is actually the word chametz means sour. It's, it's, and it's a picture of sin in us. It's a fermenting agent. Chametz is a fermenting agent causing bread to rise. It's the first step in the process of decay. Did you know that? It's the first step in the process of decay. And so for seven days, we're to eat unleavened. And that goes for not just breads, but wheats and, and, and pastas and, and things like that. Now, I don't encourage people, don't be religious about it, but it's just God says, you know, this is, this is a season to remember you're separate. You're separated from that. Chametz and that 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 sourness is that that um, yeast. It's it's a corrupting the in, corrupting influence of sin that spreads throughout the whole loaf, and that's why God says, "Remember this, remember this." And Yeshua, even at times, he said, "Beware of the leaven of the." And he mentioned three categories of people: Pharisees, Sadducees, and Herod. Throughout the scriptures, you say, what is it? Beware. And when he would say this to the, to the disciples, they were like, what is he saying? About, not for, did we bring enough bread? They're missing it. And, and why did Yeshua mention the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Sadducees and the leaven of Herod? The leaven of the Pharisees, and, and we can read this in Matthew 23, 4. It says, they, they tie heavy loads on people's shoulders. These were the religious leaders of the day. They tie heavy loads on people's shoulders, but they won't lift a finger to help carry them. And in Acts 15, and, and um, this is the... Jerusalem Council, they're getting ready for this to, to receive the Gentiles into, you know, the plan of salvation. And, and they say, so why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our, father, our fathers nor us had the strength to bear? The leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy, self-righteousness. That's what it is, religion, unforgiveness, bitterness. Malice, wickedness, envy, jealousy, strife. That's the, the, the leaven of the Pharisees. And he mentions also the leaven of the, um, the Sadducees. They were the other, kind of more of a liberal experience. Anything goes, guys. Anything goes. Do whatever you want. And that, of course, is, it's basically just license to do anything you want. And Yeshua says, beware of them. Don't take that leaven in. Get rid of that out of your lives. And of course, the, the, the leaven of Herod is, is materialism. He was an evil king. He was an evil guy leading. And he was supposed to be Jewish, but he, was, he, didn't, care about, he didn't care about the God of Israel. He just cared about himself and materialism and just, just all kinds of, of immorality going on. And God is saying to his people during this time, separate yourself from that leaven. Amen? And we also see that unleavened bread, matzah is a picture of Yeshua's body. Perfect. If I had a piece of matzah, I would hold it up to you and say it was, it's, it was bruised. If you look at a piece of matzah and it's baked, it's got like being burned. And it's pierced, 
and it's pierced. It's a picture of Jesus. That's what it is. That's why we are called to, to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And finally, on the third day, it's called the Sheaf of First Fruits. Leviticus 23, verse 9. Leviticus 23, starting in verse 9. Adonai said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel, after you, after you enter the land, I am giving you and its harvest, its ripe crops, you are to bring a sheaf of first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen, to the priests. He is to wave the sheaf before Adonai so that you will be accepted. The Kohen is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. On the day that you wave the sheaf, you are to offer a male lamb without defect in its first year as a burnt offering for Adonai. Its grain offering is to be one gallon of fine flour mixed with olive oil, an offering made by fire to Adonai as a fragrant aroma. Its drink offering is to be made of is to be of wine, one quart. You are not to eat bread, dried grain, or fresh grain until the day you bring the offering for your for your God. This is a permanent regulation throughout all your generations, no matter where you live. God is speaking to Israel, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and he says on the third day is to bring this sheaf of first fruits and to wave it before the foe. And that is what we would call in the Christian church Resurrection Day. That's what Resurrection Day is. It was the first day of the week, so it would be a Sunday, okay? So we can argue about what day was actually the Passover and what day was the three days and all that stuff. We don't get to get there. But this is what it represented. But this is also a picture. God is speaking prophetically to the people of Israel. He's saying, these are my appointed times. Where were they when God gave them these commandments? Just, it's okay to be wrong. They were in the wilderness. They were in the desert. They had nothing. They weren't even in the land. They didn't have crops. They didn't have anything. So God is speaking prophetically. When you enter the land, this is what you're doing. And this is what you're to do. Yet God sees who they are to become. And this is true of us today. God doesn't just look at where you're at today. He says who you, he sees who you are to become. The first fruits is what the barley is the first fruits. That's and it's a hearty hardy wheat. It's the early wheat, and it's very hardy. And there, it's to be found and roped off with a red thread. Isn't that interesting? And through, so generations and generations, the first crop of barley would come up. The priests would rope it off with a red, with a red thread, and then they would bring a sheaf of it and wave it before the priest on that first day, on that resurrection day, on that feast of first fruits. This is what Yeshua fulfilled. John chapter 12, verse 23. Yeshua gave them this answer. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Yes, indeed, I tell you that unless a grain of wheat that falls to the ground dies, it stays just a grain. But if it dies, it provides, produces a big harvest. And then down in verse 32, it says, As for me, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. What a picture of the resurrection, guys. That's what this Passover season is all about. The death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yeshua. And that's why we celebrate it. That's why we remember it. You bring the present, you present a, the best and the choicest before the Lord. Whatever's sacred and holy, it's a consecration of the entire harvest. In other words, you bring the first fruits. And, and when it's done properly and, and God blesses it, all the other crops are blessed. And it's interesting because in the spring, you have the, the wheat crops, the barley and all of those crops. Later in the season, it's the fruit. It's the fruit when we come around Sukkot, tabernacles. He is the acceptable first fruits. That's what it's about. And because he is acceptable, guess what? We're accepted by the Father to come into his presence. That's what it's about. He's inviting us into that covenant family that he is. Yeshua 
That's what the cross, he came to die. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, but the fact is the Messiah has been raised from the dead. Amen. The first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through Adam, a man, so also the resurrection of the dead has come through a man, Yeshua. Yeshua. He had fully man, yet God. For just as in connection with Adam all die, so in connection with the Messiah all will will be made alive. But each in his own order, the Messiah Messiah, the Christ, is the first fruits. Then those who belong to the Messiah, that's us, at the time of his coming. That's what it's about. Just a few more scriptures about the cross, and then we're going to have a special time of ministry. But when Yeshua went on the cross, when Yeshua went to the grave, and when Yeshua ascended to the Father, he brought us with him. Do you get that? I want to read some scriptures in Colossians. Well, first of all, I want to read in Romans chapter 6. I love Romans. I can, one day maybe I'll do a study in the whole book of Romans. It might take about four or five years. But Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1, it says, "What What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? May it never be. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who were immersed or baptized into Messiah Yeshua were immersed into his death? So when he died, I died. Therefore, we were buried together with him through immersion into death in order that just as Messiah was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. When he died, I died. When he arose, I arose with him. When he ascended, I ascended with him. Amen? Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Messiah, keep seeking the things above where Messiah is sitting at the right hand of God. Focus your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you have died. Again, you have died because when he went to the cross and you're a believer in him, you went to the cross with him. Focus your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Messiah in God. When Messiah, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. So our new relationship with sin is we're dead to sin. The power of sin has been destroyed. It no longer, yes, it's in us, but it doesn't have to lead us and guide us. We, don't, we can say no to sin. We have the grace to say no to sin and to walk in that life that God's called us to. And you know what? Interesting thing in the scriptures, it says that the sin doesn't have access to my spirit. Why? Because now, because, you see, in the wilderness, God spoke to the people of Israel through the prophets, through Moses, through a cloud, through the fire, at the tabernacle. But guess what? In the new covenant, he's living inside of us. And the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. And now his spirit. He has taken over. He possesses my spirit. Sin may be in the body, but it has no access to the spirit. Do you believe that? I'm not just preaching that just because it sounds good. He has no access to the spirit. Yes, he can have access to our mind, will, and emotions, but not to the spirit because that's where Jesus has made his home. We are his tabernacle, his sukkah, his temple. So our new relationship with sin, Romans 6, 6, our old self was put to death on the cross with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed so that we no longer serve sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. Just like God took the Israelites out of Egypt, they were no longer slaves in Egypt, even though they still had a mentality, many of them did, of being slaves. God says, you are no longer, that is not who you are any longer. We can see, and I'm just going to wrap things up with this, is in the story of Lazarus, Lazarus, we can see a mini picture of the Passover. 
He was dead. Israel was, they were basically dead being slaves in Egypt. And God removed, Yeshua comes and he removes the stone. That's taking them out of Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea on dry land. They were resurrected. Lazarus was dead. How long was he dead? Four days in the tomb for four days. He was resurrected. That's like the people of Israel coming out on dry land and from the Red Sea. And then he began, he, Lazarus, and the people of, of Israel walked in the newness of life. Life. Yeshua says to the, to the people who were there, take those, loose them, loose them from the, all the bandages and the wrappings around him. He's free. And then the next thing we see with Lazarus, he's seated with Jesus, having a meal. This is a picture of covenant. We were dead, and because of Jesus, we're made alive. He invites us to come and to fellowship with him at a table. Again, I'm Jewish. It's all about food. We come to that place of fellowship with him, and it's over a meal. It's time for the body of Christ to to come out of that place of of in-betweenness, living between Egypt and the promised land, and to say, you know what? I may not feel it. I may not look it. And my actions sometimes don't, don't resemble what I'm, but it's called me into covenant. And I want, us to, I want us to close our service before we have communion. I just, I've been fr- invited some, our friends and their elders in our congregation, David and Laura, to, to minister to us um, with a dance. I hope you're okay with that. Um, but it's a picture of the Lord calling us into that place of covenant. It's, it's the song is the spirit and the bride. The spirit and the bride say come. The spirit and the bride say come. He wants to come. He's coming to us. Just like I started today, he's calling us to himself. And so I just want you to, to just watch and just enjoy and just, but receive this from the Lord. So David and Laura, I'm going to move this out of the way, and then we're going to, and then afterwards, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. Can I share a word? Just real short. Okay. Okay. Um, It's it's a a word that I received from the Lord for the church. Okay. Should I do it now? Yeah. Do it now. You didn't hear that, did you? (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to share a word for this body here. Um, This is what I saw as during worship, the shade was up and I could, like the, the breath of God was moving through this valley and it's going into homes and he's giving people a hunger for God in this whole valley here. His breath is moving. And he's saying, as you are faithful in the small things, as you continue to lift him up in worship, and you are obedient to what he calls you to do in every way, then these people are going to be coming here. God's going to bring them in, and he's going to fill this place and his word is going to move through this whole valley here and he's going to bring the breath of God and it made me think of this little girl here who's who the breath of God was put into her to breathe and I just feel like that's what God is doing in this body as you are faithful in the small things he's going to open up the big things so and this actually this song is very relevant to that because it's the title of it is the spirit and the bride and we they say come and it's the spirit who is drawing 
The Spirit is saying, come unto me. The Spirit is saying, come, even come away with me. And the bride is saying, come, Yeshua, come, Yeshua. The desire is, is on both, both sides. And so this is a picture, of, kind of a picture, a little picture of it. And let, and let all who hear join the invitation and say, come, and let him who thirsts come.
He's calling us to himself. And there was a point in there in the dance, and it's some um, it's something you would see in a Jewish wedding, is that the bride walks around the groom seven times. And you saw that they didn't do it seven times, I don't think, but they did it. That's in the groom is just an adoration of his bride, and the bride is an adoration of the groom. It's a picture of that color. Thank you so much for tuning in to the original Fuel Church YouTube and being a part of what we're doing here at Fuel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed what you heard today, share it with a friend. And if you'd like to support Fuel and Fuel International, information to do so will be in the description below. Have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you soon.